the relationship between information processes. So in this video, we're going to try to illustrate the relationship between the seven information processes. And in saying this, this isn't the one and only way they can be made connections between them. There are many ways you can make connections between information processes, but I'm going to try to illustrate and outline a logical way of understanding how the information process is connected. Okay. So to start off with, it all begins with collecting. And hence, when you learn about information process, you probably started off with collecting because essentially that involves the data going into the system, the data that has already been gathered by the actual uh, project team or users or participants that's been gathered and then they need to put it into the system okay and this is done through mice keyboard cameras phones scanners touch screens you name it a whole lot of data as well as tools within software such as import tools that allow data to be entered into the system logically then once data goes into the system it is arranged in some sort of format. So collected data is arranged by the system through the information process of organizing. It's given a data type or it goes in a specific file format. It might go into a database, into a database management system, or it might be something specific to the type of application software being used. So it might be in the spreadsheet that it goes into a tabular format or in a Word document, it's got that pages type format. Okay, so the collected data is then organized within the system. Once the data has been organized within the system, then we can then manipulate it. Okay. And that's what analyzing is all about. So organized data is given more meaning. Okay. We can search it. We can sort it. We can model it, simulate it, do what if scenarios. Okay. And that's kind of how we turn that data into information through that process of analysis. Hence, once analysis is complete is usually then reorganized. Okay. In a way. So in the case of sorting, okay, it might put everything in a specific order, such as alphabetically, it is then reorganized there. So we've got kind of a cycle there happening with organizing and analyzing. So those three, which are kind of the first three information processes you learn about kind of make sequential sense, but then things start to overlap now. So if I go back to collecting now, when data does go into a system, essentially what happens, it is stored on the system straight away. All right, so it goes into either RAM, okay, and you can see RAM's in bold there because RAM is obviously where all live data goes. So when data initially is entered into a system, RAM's the one that's actually storing it at that point. And then when you save it to something such as a magnetic disk, optical disk, flash memory, or a server, okay, it is then saved into permanent storage, which we can then retrieve later on. Okay, so when we collect data, firstly, it has to be stored on the system, and then whether it be in RAM when it's live data, it is then retrieved so we can organize it, okay? And so we can actually manipulate it, okay, as we are using it. Now, organization means just viewing it, all right, in, in its structure that we put into the system. Though when it is being analyzed, we obviously can retrieve it again. And then obviously with analyzing, as said, we're turning that data into information through those processes. This is there, the searching, the sorting, the modeling, all that. That means the data is being updated and thus it needs to then be resaved back to the system. Okay, and so that that updated form of the data, which is now information, is stored back on the system's hard drive or solid state drive. All right, and once again, that is something that is constantly happening. Data is always being updated on our systems as we use it. All right, and that will build to something a little bit later on. Now, both organizing and analyzing. So organizing, whether I'm just viewing data or analyzing where we're actually manipulating data, the user is interacting with the data at those stages. So therefore it needs to be displayed. Okay, so organize or analyze information needs to be presented to the users. So if it's visual, it's gonna be through the monitor. If it's sound, we're gonna do it through speakers. We might also actually um, print it off into a hard copy format as well and through paper, or it could be, be shown to an audience through a projector. Okay, so we need to display it to the actual users who are interacting with the system. Now, underlying all of this, okay, and we're going to go back down to storing and retrieving and back into random access memory. This is important into the next information process, which is that of processing. Processing is important because instructions related to all information processes are sent to RAM and executed by the system's processes. So this is in most cases, the CPU, or we might have some sort of multi-process type of information system in conjunction with RAM once again. Okay, and this is through the fetch execute cycle. Instructions are sent from different parts of the system to RAM. Okay, they go into the CPU where they're decoded, they're executed upon, and then they're sent back to RAM so that instruction can then be acted upon by the system. Okay, so it relates to all of it. So everything is sent to uh, processing, okay, to the CPU, and then it's obviously sent back into RAM, and then something happens based on what the instruction was in another part of the system. All right, so once again, related to all information processes. 
There's one last information process which we haven't seen yet, and that is that of transmitting and receiving. That is because all these different information processes are relating to each other, all right? And so one way that it's happening within and one system on its own is through the motherboard and the system bus, the data can get transmitted through different parts of the system, allowing for different information processes to execute. External components can connect to the system as well through the system supports, but then we can also talk about information systems comprised of multiple devices or terminals. Okay, they can be set up in a LAN or WAN format. They need to be connected through transition mediums such as optical fiber or wireless radio technology, okay, and use routers and network operating systems to build larger systems that make use of networks. So I hope this video has given you a bit of an understanding of the logic behind how the information processes can be connected with one another. It kind of does start with collecting and you know, goes on to organizing, analyzing, but then things start to overlap and happen behind the scenes with storing, retrieving, and processing really occurring with all other information processes and all of that to happen. And then really the end product that the user sees at the end with that of displaying. So I hope this helps you understand it. And remember, this isn't the definitive way that the information processes do occur. There's many other connections you can make. Okay, but I hope this is giving you that good base understanding.